Hey everyone, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about packing and running chromatography columns. Since we're coming up on that in my course, I thought you might be coming up on it in yours and you like a little bit of advice. So the goal of running a chromatography experiment is always to resolve two or more compounds in space. A separation of two or more compounds means physically getting them into different regions of space where we can collect them. Now this depends on a number of factors, whether or not we'll be successful, not the least of which is the quality of our column. Columns must be of uniform length, diameter, and density in order to function optimally. And we'll take a look at why this is in just a little bit. Additionally, the analyte solution that we load needs to be not only very concentrated, but loaded in a fairly narrow band to facilitate or minimize the amount of distance that needs to travel in order to isolate one compound from another. And again, we're going to look at this in just a moment. But before we actually look at a hypothetical column running, let's construct a hypothetical column and take a look at what each part does. Okay, so let's begin the process of packing a column here. Now, your chromatography column will probably look something like this. It's a long, slender glass tube with a stopcock at the base, which can be opened to drain liquids uh, through the bottom, through gravity. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is add a little piece of glass wool to this. And the purpose of my glass wool is to prevent solid material from flowing through the stopcock when it's opened. So naturally, I want to fill that little base of the neck, but not too tight. If you fill it up too tightly, then even liquids won't drain through. So just a very even-handed amount of glass wool in the base. The next component of my column is sand. And I add sand so that I can provide a level surface onto which I can build my silica column. So I'm going to put just enough sand in there that I can generate a level surface by agitating the column gently. And I'm also going to be sure that I add enough sand that I'm beyond the taper of the column. And this is because I want my column to be of uniform width throughout. And if I don't get my sand level above the taper, that means that my column will be below the taper, and therefore I won't meet this criteria. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of solvent or mobile phase to the column. And the reason I'm going to do this is to protect that sand layer from being disturbed when I pour a very dense slurry of my stationary phase in. So I'm going to gently add some solvent and then again tap my column if necessary to get that sand level again. So at this point, when I pour my mobile phase slurry into the column, I expect that it will splash into the top of the solvent and not the top of my sand layer. So I'm going to add my slurry now, which is my stationary phase suspended in my mobile phase or solvent. When I first do this, of course I'll have a suspension which fills the column. But over time, density will cause it to settle and ultimately, if I've done this correctly, give me a nice uniform column of regular density, regular width, and a regular length. So this is how we want our columns to look just before we are ready to pack them, or excuse me, to load them. At this point, I can drain the mobile phase to the level of my stationary phase, thereby making my column ready to load. So let's go ahead and load a column here quickly. Um, but first, let's review each component of the column. I have my glass wool plug to prevent any solids from flowing through the stopcock when opened. My sand layer gets me above the taper and provides a level surface onto which my silica column can be packed. My silica gel column is of uniform width, density, and length. And above this, I have my mobile phase, which is saturating the entire system. So again, to load the column, the first thing I'll need to do is drain my mobile phase to the top of the stationary phase, being sure to stop it just as it reaches that point. If I drain additional mobile phase out, my stationary phase can dry, and that can cause problems. Next, I'm going to use a transfer pipette to gently add a narrow band of concentrated sample to the top of my column. So at this point, my sample is resting on top of the column, but is not actually saturating the column. It's not actually in the column. 
so I need to get my sample in contact with the column before I add any more mobile phase. I accomplish this by draining the mobile phase again just to the top of the column. At this point, I now have all of my sample in contact with the stationary phase so that when I add additional mobile phase, I don't dissolve my sample into the pool. So now I'll gently add additional mobile phase and my column is now ready to run. So when I open the stopcock again, my uh, analyte, which is in contact with the stationary phase, will begin to flow in the direction of the flowing mobile phase at a rate which is determined by its relative affinities for the mobile and stationary phases. And as you can see in this example, I've given a yellow compound a behavior like a less polar compound, and a purple band there uh, would represent a more polar compound in my chromatography experiment. So let's take one more look at a properly packed, well-run chromatography experiment here with my plug, sand, silica gel, analyte, and mobile phase. At this point, I'm going to run this column. And if I've packed my column correctly and made good choices, I expect that at the end of the run, I will have separated those two analyte bands in space from one another. This means that I can simply collect them as they elute from the base of the column and thereby separate them. But if these two bands are not separated from one another, then my compounds are not separated from one another. So again, we want a column that is of uniform length, width, and density with a narrow, concentrated band of analyte loaded. So let's take a look at all of the potential impacts of not having this particular set of uh, requirements in place. First, let's take a look at an uneven packing. So here I have a column where the top is not evenly packed. As you can see, there is a shorter path length on the right-hand side of the column versus the left. So when I load and run my sample, I expect that the bands on the right-hand side will travel farther than those on the left in a given amount of time. In my second example, I have cracks or channels. Now this is a density-related issue. So if a column has dried out or has been packed too rapidly, I can expect this to happen. And of course, when analyte is traveling through this channel within the column, it's not partitioning onto the stationary phase and therefore is moving faster. So even a well-loaded sample on this column is expected to generate a situation where separation is suboptimal. In my third example, I haven't added enough sand and my column is within the tapered region of the actual chromatography column. Again, when I properly load and run a sample, everything's going great at first, but when I reach that narrow uh, region at the base, my bands distort because the distance they must travel to reach the exit has changed. And finally, if I have a well-packed column but load a very wide band of analyte, I can expect that they'll travel at the same velocity as they would otherwise, meaning that the wide bands have left me with a region which is overlapping. So you'll notice that in all of these columns, when I get near the end of my run, I have a situation where I have both compounds eluding simultaneously. So I've defeated the purpose of my column here. And this is why we always want to be sure that we pack columns which are of uniform length, width, and density, while loading an analyte which is very concentrated and creating a very narrow band. Stick to these rules and your chromatography experiment should work great. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. I'm Professor Davis. Take care.